welcome back to my channel for a video that I am now not really looking forward to doing. I'm a little nervous about this video. I did a poll this week asking what video you wanted me to film today, and the one that won is reacting to very honest assumptions by y'all. So I posted in the community tab, I said, leave your assumptions here. I said, don't be afraid. Uh, you don't have to be nice. And then I also said, like the comments that you want me to most likely react to. And man, there were, there were a lot, there were a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to be trying to react to these as honest and unbiased as possible. Some are very accurate, some are very wrong. And hopefully, though it's hard when it's about yourself, I can give a non-biased opinion about myself to you guys. At least I do know I had to take something called the Berkman exam, which is a very in-depth personality test. I took it through my church. All the core volunteers who are also leaders take it at our church, so we all know our strengths and weaknesses and how we are best utilized. And one very interesting thing about my Berkman that I actually scored very high in is the ability to assess myself from an unbiased point of view in relation to others. So hopefully that's gonna come in handy today. Let's get into it. Let's just Let's get into it. How this is going to work is I'm going to obviously respond to the most liked comments in here. I'm gonna save them for last though. We're gonna go through some of the more medium liked ones, like, you know, the ones with like 15, 20 likes and react to those first. And then I will save the most liked ones for last. And I'm thinking that after I finish filming this video, I'm probably going to delete the thread only because the assumptions that are very incorrect or maybe even a little bit offensive, I don't want people to come after the commenters. I want to protect the commenters because this is all in fairness. I give everybody the green light to go ahead, but people on the internet can be wild. So I want to protect those who commented. So I'll probably delete this whole thread after I'm done. Where should we start? Let's see. Let's start with a couple of, you know, more lighthearted ones. So this one says, I assume that you're kind of a goody two shoes, like conservative and modest. And I don't know if she means conservative in like the way I dress, but I would say that that's pretty true. I was definitely always like the teacher's pet growing up, which is very cringy to admit, but I always, I, I think that y'all know this about me. I'm a chronic people pleaser and I always try to do my best in everything I do. And so because of that, I was definitely a goody two shoes. I wasn't like a tattletale teacher's pet, but I was very much a like, go to the teacher's desk and chat with them about their life because I wanted them to like me kind of student. It's pretty annoying though. <laughs> this one says, my honest assumption is that you waist train because your waist to hips ratio is, ama is too amazing to be natural. That is very kind. I do not, it's actually funny. I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I have pretty bad acid reflux. So even just wearing high-waisted jeans for too long, I get really nauseous, uh, which is why I live in pajama bottoms. Look, why I live in pajama bottoms all the time. <laughs> but that's something that I've always been really interested in, like what it would be like. I'm pretty sure I would feel terrible, like physically if I waist train, just because I have so many GI issues that I don't think I should restrict my gastrointestinal tract at all. But that could make a very interesting Mikkel tries episode. I wanna start trying more things, maybe trying waist training for a week just to see how it makes me feel. I don't know. But thank you for the compliment. I, uh, I definitely have big hips <laughs> in relation to my waist. That's where I, that's why I put on, that's why I put on my pounds. This is interesting. This one has 18 likes. It says that you were popular in high school and I went to an inner city high school to go to a magnet performing arts program and there was really no concept of popularity there. I mean, my class was like 20 kids. So I feel like that's not a fair assessment. In middle school, that was my most traditional school experience. I guess I was definitely not popular. I. <laughs> I'm gonna share a very embarrassing picture of myself here. This is me in eighth grade. I created denim leg warmers and wore them to school despite the fact my mom said I would probably be bullied, which I kind of was, but that's just the kind of kid I was. I was very unique and I didn't really uh, care to fit in and I was the theater kid. I was in seventh grade, but I was immediately pulled up to the advanced eighth grade theater in middle school just because like that was my niche. And so that's kind of the kid I was. I definitely was not popular when I went to normal school and then my high school really didn't have popularity. So I don't think that's uh, a question I can fairly answer. This one has 21 likes. I assume that you had a perfect childhood. I had a really good childhood. It's crazy, I'm 23 years old. I still haven't lost a family member. We didn't struggle with like typical money stress. My parents had a very healthy relationship, so I've never seen them fight. Like very, 
common issues that kids go through, I didn't have to go through. And honestly, a lot of times I feel guilty about that. I feel guilty about the fact that my life has been so easy. That's something I think about a lot. But yes, that is a fair assumption is I did have a very good childhood. I don't know why I feel guilty about it, but I do. This one says, I assume you never have money problems. I definitely stress out about money like the average person. And I've definitely had seasons of like coming into adulthood where you know, I would try to track my finances, but I didn't, wouldn't do well. And then I was like a few hundred bucks short for a month. Um, that was more of like my first year in LA. But I mean, like I said, growing up as a kid, my parents were very financially stable. So I never had any much money issues as a kid. And I have become very into personal finance. So I've become much better at managing my money and living well below my means. So because of that, I mean, I could spend more money, but I choose not to so that I don't have to stress out about money. So I would say that that's a fair assumption. And I actually want to, I want to go from that one to this one. It says, I, this one's very interesting. It says, I assume that sometimes even though you say you want to talk about taboo stuff on your channel, you also kind of like other younger 20 year olds to know how much money you have and are able to spend. This is just an assumption. I really love you and love your channel and your kind sweetheart. And that is super interesting because like I said, I love personal finance and honestly, those were my favorite videos to make. And I felt so much more comfortable making those videos when everybody knew I was waiting tables because clearly I, you know, wasn't making a killing. I was trying to make ends meet by working a night job. And so being in that phase of life, I felt totally comfortable talking about money because I could, it, I felt like it was more apparent from an outside point of view that it never came from a prideful spot. But now that I'm self-employed, I'm still not, you know, <laughs> rolling in dough, but I'm definitely at a more financially stable part of my life than I was when I talked about those types of things. Now I don't want to make personal finance videos as much. I'm much more hesitant to. There's so many topics I want to talk about, but obviously when I talk about personal finance, I kind of relate it to my own experiences, which is talking about my income. And I'm much more hesitant to do that now that I am a little more comfortable than I was because I don't want it to come from a prideful spot. So it's kind of actually a bummer since that's a topic I love. I love watching money videos, learning about money, learning how other people spend their money, but now I don't really want to make them as much because I don't want to get that assumption, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's a bummer. It is, but it's interesting that you thought that because I've definitely slowed down those videos for that reason. Okay, this one is so wild to me. This one has 35 likes and I have gotten this comment maybe two or three times and maybe it was all from the same person, but the fact that it has 35 likes, like, blows my mind. This says that it's kind of rambly, kind of all over the place. It says you receive a lot of things in the mail and you do pretty big shopping hauls and you also had cosmetic surgery, but you're a minimalist. I just don't see how you can be a minimalist and still indulge in things like this. To me, you are the ultimate consumer. I love your videos and you seem like a nice person, but I do not think you are a minimalist. I don't think I'm a minimalist either. I don't know where that assumption came from that I called myself a minimalist. I have I don't think I've ever called myself a minimalist. I've talked about probably in the past how I really admire those that have a more minimalist mindset. And I did a video once maybe like three years ago where it was an experiment. I tried to see if I were to create a capsule wardrobe, what items I would keep. I think I gave myself like 30 items and I tried to see what those 30 items would be, which was honestly just a fun experiment. But I have never called myself a minimalist. I feel like my job is to try out products, is to try on clothes, is to give reviews and to let you know which things I love, which things I don't love and my honest opinions on them so that you as a consumer know where is worth spending your money versus not spending your money. And so that's kind of my job. So I'm definitely not a minimalist I, at all. I don't know why this person <laughs> feels like I called myself one before. I don't, I don't know. I think that that's just so funny. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why it, I don't know. This one says, I feel like you don't realize how privileged you are in parentheses, a hey, how easy you get it, which I don't quite understand what she means by how easy you get it, like get, get things. But I definitely do recognize how privileged I am in every sense of the word. And I know it's like a very serious thing, especially right now. Like, like I said, I was raised by parents who we're very smart with their money and um, I am white, Christian. I mean, I guess the only more privileged I could be would be a male, but I definitely recognize it. And that is also something that I often feel guilty about, though those factors 
are not controlled by me, I do feel guilty, which I know is not a politically correct thing to say, that you feel guilty about your privilege, but this is just me being honest. So I try my best to acknowledge it and acknowledge how my privilege makes me see the world and try to use my privilege to help others. I, I definitely realize it. And it's something that I do think about a lot. I definitely do think about it a lot. So there was a lot of comments that were very similar. This one says, you are very sensitive and often find yourself seeking others approval and others being like, you're a people pleaser, basically that. And it is so true. It is so true. It is something that I struggle with a lot. It is something that I struggle with a lot on this platform. I have felt this um, increasing weight every day of trying my best to be the best person I can be online. And it's really hard with um, getting comments and DMs a lot where I try to be as in the know as possible about anything and everything that could possibly be not politically correct about what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing, and this like overwhelming sense of pressure that I honestly put on myself because I am a people pleaser and I do really care about seeking other people's approval. Um, some days it's too much to handle, if I'm being honest. It's a lot. <laughs> um, and like I said, I know that's a pressure that I put on myself. Um, I wish I could care less. I really wish I could just not care, but the fact of the matter is I care a lot. Like I really wanna be a good person and I really, like I have an overwhelming fear of saying something offensive. I have an overwhelming fear of not being educated on a topic and saying something wrong, spreading misinformation. I have an overwhelming fear of cancel culture. I have an overwhelming fear that I will say one thing wrong and that my whole platform that I've worked on for five years to build this job that I love will be taken away from me. I know it's so silly because I know that there's much more serious things going on in the world, but it is a lot to handle sometimes being such a people pleaser and wanting to do good. It's dumb. I just care a lot and I wish I didn't sometimes. And I do think I've gotten increasingly sensitive over the years just of, um, you know, the more and more messages and the more and more comments that you get, the more and more it weighs you down a little bit. And um, I hold on to those things a lot and I think about them a lot. And like, I've talked about this in the past, I get 99 nice comments for every one critical one I get, but I think about the critical ones and it just like builds up in my mind, which is a hard thing. I know it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. And I love this job. And I went from being a people pleaser to being a people pleaser in this field. But it's worth it. And I love this job. And 99% of the people that comment, I love getting to read the comments and interact with those types of people. But the 1% that I feel the need to please really becomes overwhelming some days for me. And it's something I need to work on. And maybe I should talk to a professional about <laughs> learning how to navigate that and juggle those concerns and fears and anxieties and emotions. But I hope that everybody knows I'm just always trying to be the best person possible. But the fact of the matter is nobody's perfect. <laughs> All we can do is try, you know? I want to interrupt rambling Mikkel real quick for a quick second to say a very quick thank you to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. If you watch my channel, you've definitely heard of them by now. I love them so much, but Skillshare is an online learning community that has so many classes about every single category from more artistic hobbies to lifestyle things, to business topics, to personal finance. There's anything and everything on Skillshare, it feels like. Skillshare is specifically curated for learning, so there's no ads and each lesson is broken into modules. So a lot of times when I am just quickly eating breakfast or doing my makeup, I'll watch one or two modules of a class and then I can come back and finish the class later. It's also incredibly affordable. It comes to about $10 a month if you do the annual subscription. And I typically use Skillshare to grow my business and to grow my skills to help my business, but there's actually one class that I want to take for fun next. And it is by Emily Henderson. I have it pulled up right here. It's called Style Your Space, Creative Tips and Techniques for Interior Design. I know y'all know that I've just flipped around a lot of my furniture lately and I've been very into interior design. So I'm excited to take that one. As with most of my Skillshare partnerships, there's an amazing opportunity that I will have linked down below where for a limited time, if you use that link, you will actually get two months of the premium membership 
for free, meaning you can watch unlimited classes for two months, no strings attached. And from that point, you can either cancel it or you can go ahead and sign up for your $10 a month subscription. All right, this was a good little breather because this video is about to go back to getting pretty honest. <laughs> so thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and for providing a little break within this video. And thank you to all of you that watch this and use my links because it does really help me get to produce these videos and get to bring you four videos a week for free. <laughs> for free for you. Back to the video. Okay. Whew. There's a couple assumptions in here about Brooke and I. This one says, this one has 17 likes. It says, I assume that you and Brooke don't ascribe to typical biblical gender roles within your marriage. Man is the head of the household, submissive wife, etc. Definitely not. <laughs> I would say we have a very equal partnership in every sense of the word, which I guess I never really thought about us not being traditional in that sense. It just seems right that we consult each other about everything. We split responsibilities very evenly. I mean, we are both, you know, bringing income into the household. We both help keep our house in order. We talk through big decisions before we make them and value each other's opinions equally. I guess maybe not every marriage is like that, which I guess I haven't given a lot of thought to, but we definitely have a very 50-50 marriage, which I love. I think it's very healthy. And this one says, I think you and Brooke never fight. That has 16 likes. And a lot of people said, I thought the same thing. Someone else commented, said that's unrealistic. Even the best couples fight about things sometimes. So I guess it depends on your definition of fight. I am a very, very, very non-confrontational person. I also am a very not angry person. As you can see, I get honest and I get emotional sometimes, but I never really experience anger. I experience stress and anxiety and sadness, but anger is not an emotion I frequently experience. I, I experience annoyance, like when someone's walking very slow on a sidewalk in the middle of the sidewalk and I'm like, pick a side. <laughs> I experienced that, but I never have an angry, I've never had an angry fight with anybody in my life. But I mean, with any relationship, you're going to have serious conversations and discussions. And I think it's very important to talk about things that you might disagree about, or you might be annoyed with. But I would say if your traditional definition of fight is like an explosive argument, then it's true. We don't I mean, I've never had that type of conversation with anybody in my life, but I do have honest like heart to hearts about important things, even disagreements, even if it's hard. So that's my answer to that. I would say depends on your definition. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. This is interesting because I really like the uh, response to it and we haven't gotten to the big juicy ones yet. We'll get there. This one says, I assume that you are so expensive just like others, like spending here and there. And then I was so in shock that you go to thrift stores and buy things there without any hesitation. I really love the way you handle money and how mindful you are, et cetera, et cetera. And then the comment said, I agree. It seems like she has expensive tastes. I do too, LOL, no shade, but she knows how to be mindful about splurging in areas where she wants to, but still being frugal in other ways. She'll even sometimes say things in her video along the lines of this was too expensive, but I justified it by telling myself I saved a lot of money by doing whatever. So I definitely assume that even though she likes to spend money sometimes, she is always thoughtful about what she is doing. I have expensive taste for sure. I definitely like the finer things in life, <laughs> but I honestly experience a lot of spending guilt. Um, even just like getting a massage, I feel so guilty about spending $60 to get a massage, things like that. But I tell myself, so this is one of the things where I think I am frugal in some areas and I think I am excessive in some other areas. Like we definitely spend too much money eating out, that's for sure. But I also tell myself that as long as I am putting a good portion of my income away, that it's okay to treat myself every once in a while. Lately, I've actually been living off of, I've been trying to be very frugal and put away about half of what I make, which has been very hard. And even still putting away half of what I make, I make one big purchase and I feel so guilty about it. So I would say that I love spending money. I love getting the finer things in life, but I do feel bad about doing so even if I'm saving money. And so I love to find out, I love to find a good deal. I love going to thrift stores, discount stores, shopping sale racks, um, because then it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Like it does take a little bit of a hunt, but I find something that I love and I don't feel as guilty about it because it was on sale or discounted or thrifted or whatever. So that's why I love doing those things because I, I do, to reiterate, I'm definitely not a minimalist. It's, I feel bad to say that I like things, but um, I do. I do, some things I really like. I really like good bedding, nice clothes, pretty dainty jewelry, and candles. 
and matcha and food. <laughs> okay, there was one in here that I wanna talk about. A lot of people assumed I was way older than I am, which I'm kind of honored. Okay, this one has 16 likes. It says, since you seem so into religion and stuff, I assume that you don't like atheists or people with different religious views. A stuck up Christian who doesn't believe that there's any other way and tells others that they're going to hell or that you'll quote, pray for them to find God. Let me just apologize on behalf of so many Christians because so many Christians are like that. And I've had some messages or comments or DMs from people that say, I found out you were a Christian and I'm gay. And so because of that, I assumed you hate me and I stopped watching your videos. I had like four people comment that in the same day, surprisingly on one of my very honest videos. And I just want you to know all of my beliefs stem down to two things as a Christian. I believe that Jesus tells us we need to do two things. We need to love Jesus and we need to love our neighbor. He doesn't say we need to love our Christian neighbor. He doesn't say we need to love only our straight neighbors. He doesn't say we need to love only our neighbors with the same political views as us. No, he says, love your neighbor. There's no rules attached to that. It's literally love everybody. So because of that, I, I've had some people say too, like you seem to have a very exclusive friend group with like very similar views from you. To be honest, I just don't have a ton of real life friends. <laughs> but I would say a lot of the friends I do have, especially from like going to an arts high school and things like that, a lot of my friends aren't Christian. A lot of my friends aren't straight and I love them. And if you are not a Christian, if you have different views than me, a different lifestyle than me, anything, I want you to know that you are so loved and so supported here and that is what Jesus would want. There are unfortunately a lot of mean Christians in the world that love rules and love being holier than thou and that is not who Jesus is at all. A lot of people are so hurt by the church because the church is run by imperfect humans and I just want you to know that Christianity is not that. Christianity is just based off of love. And so that's why I don't get too into talking about Christianity here is because I want my atheist friends, my agnostic friends, my friends with different religions to know that they are welcome here and to feel like even though I do have a strong relationship with Jesus in my life, that if they don't have that in their life, they are still so welcomed and supported and loved here. And I have had some people is a couple of the assumptions in here being like, you're a lukewarm Christian or you're not really a Christian because you don't really talk about Jesus a lot. And I made that a conscious decision on this channel. I've talked about that quite a bit is like when it comes up a natural conversation like this, I do think it's important for people to know my views and where I stand, but I don't want to alienate my friends on here that have different views than me. I want everybody to feel welcome and comfortable here and just know that they are loved by me and that yes, I am a Christian, but the only thing that really matters is I love you. And there's other platforms where I feel like I can talk a little bit more about my beliefs without it feeling too exclusive. Like on my podcast with my husband, we talk about our lives. And so it just comes up a lot relating our experiences to our faith and our beliefs. So like I do talk about Christianity a little bit more on other platforms where it feels more right. But that's my view on that is no matter what you believe, no matter who you are, I love you so much. And I am so sorry that there are so many closed minded, hateful Christians out there. It breaks my heart. It truly does. Cause that's not who Jesus is at all, at all. Okay, I guess we should get to the more serious ones, shouldn't we? The ones that have a lot of likes. Before that though, there is this very long comment that hits the nail on the head. I don't know if this person has a background in psychology or what, but it is very interesting. So I'm gonna quickly read this because this is probably one of the most accurate assumptions in this whole thing. This says, some of these are so harsh and hilariously wrong. You mentioned in a vlog one time that you're an Enneagram three. I had already made that assumption by obsessively watching your videos after discovering you two months ago. You have the, all the wonderful markers of a three, work ethic, drive, and ability to sit still for very long, personal fashion style. If you plan obsessively, you know what you want, etc. But my assumption is that you also have other qualities of a three that can often be a struggle. You morph to fit Groups, even if you don't realize you're doing it. True. You are emotional, but hesitate to show emotions. True. I hate getting emotional in front of people. So I try to kind of bottle it up. You can sometimes struggle to know who you are and dependent of others and plans. True. People sometimes think you run over them are manipulating them to your gain. No one's told me that, but I mean, maybe if so, I'm so sorry. When you get stressed, you develop more anxiety than you are willing to admit. Yes, and I'm not gonna lie, I have been struggling a lot with stress lately, which I think has led to some anxiety. And I think you're an aggressive Enneagram type, 
people have interpreted you as the one, quote, in charge of your relationship when that's not true. You and Brooke are real partners and you find groundness and peace and a steadiness. So true. I don't think you've ever said this, but I think Brooke is less of a, quote, aggressive personality type, but full of strength and you rely on and need to function. Very true. He's not aggressive, but he is very strong. And that is very true. It says your recent podcast have me leaning towards a five, a six, IDK. He's a five. I do assume that he is sometimes tired of having a significant portion of his life documented to please strangers and he doesn't really care about, but he cares about you. So he puts up with it. He is definitely a much more private person than me, which is why I avoid answering some questions that reveal too much about him. Um, and it's why he's only on this channel whenever it feels comfortable to him. It says, I assume you do have opinions on God, spirituality, politics, etc., but you really struggle with presenting anything that has a po potential to be divisive true. I want this to be a safe space for people is really where that boils down to. And it goes on and on and on and on. It's just so accurate. This one too. I assume you told yourself it was fine if people were harsh, but you will carry the weight of all these assumptions and never forget them. That's pretty true. I wanted this video to be very honest and difficult, but it does, it, they do carry a lot of weight on me and I will think about them a lot. <laughs> So this person really did a really good job of figuring me out. And this is an interesting one. This says, I assume you don't really like babysitting, so you might associate children with that experience. Possibly why you want to wait to have children. I feel terrible admitting this, but that is so true. I really don't enjoy babysitting. I really don't. It's just, I watch the clock whenever I'm babysitting. I'm like, it's only been five more minutes. I think I am fine being around kids when I have other adults to have conversations with. And I love babysitting. I love babies. I love babies. But kids wear me out. <laughs> and I feel terrible admitting that because I hope that doesn't make me a really bad mom one day. And I'm sure it's going to be different when I have my own kids, but I really don't like babysitting. I really don't like to. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let's get to the couple that have a million zillion likes before this video gets to be a million zillion years, which it basically already is. Okay, there's three that have the most likes that I'm gonna say for last. But this one we kind of already talked about. This one says, I assume that you wear the pants in your marriage. Like I said, no, no. We definitely are pretty 50-50, I would say. There's some things that I'm like, Brooke, this is all you, I trust you let me know what we should do here. And there's some things that I'm like, okay, this is what we should do here, you know? So it really is, really is pretty 50-50 in my opinion. This one says, if you weren't an actress, then you wouldn't be living in LA. I would say that's true. I really have loved the last five years in LA and there's a lot of things I love about LA. Like I love my church here. I love the weather here. I love the beach. I love the food. I love the culture for the most part. <laughs> Not really like the interaction of people culture, but the rest of it. But I don't think I would, I'm too, I think, practical to live here without acting as far as expense goes. Like, especially since I work for myself now, my dollar would go so much further if I lived elsewhere and I do really miss my family. So I would say that that's true. Um, and especially right now with my church not meeting in person and with us not being able to really get out and explore and enjoy LA, I've kind of been a little less in love with it. And I know that my love for LA will come back once I get to actually experience it again, but paying incredibly expensive rent to just sit in my tiny apartment doesn't feel really worth it right now, uh, if that makes sense. And here's the one that has 63 likes. And if y'all watched my very honest, very chatty video, you know that I talked about politics and I said, this is the one and only time you'll ever hear me talk about politics. And I explained why I don't wanna talk about politics. And I will link that video below so that I don't reiterate it because I took like eight minutes to explain it in that video. But I said I would respond to the most liked comments and this is the most liked comment and it's political. So thanks guys. My nose is still drippy from getting a little sad earlier. <sighs> It says, I assume that you hold pretty conservative values when it comes to politics, and that's why you hesitate to discuss politics on your channel, because you aren't sure of how your audience will react to that. And there are some comments in here that says, conservative, you mean that she's Republican, that she's cool with Trump? Still like her videos, but I get that vibe too. And then this one says, I thought the same thing, like she's not conservative conservative, but I definitely have had thoughts that she probably leans to the right a bit as a Christian who largely abstains from talking about politics. Like I said, I am still trying to figure out my political views and this is more than I ever wanted to share with you, but you know what? Mikkel is worn out. Mikkel is laying it all out on the table. Mikkel is hit a wall.
I will let you know that in my um, journey to figure out exactly where my political beliefs stand, I took a political compass test. And if you wanna know where I scored, I will share it with you. It wasn't very conclusive, but I actually scored almost very neutral, left versus right. I scored one to the left and I scored down. So I scored libertarian, which was very interesting to me. But if you must know, that is where I scored and I am still trying to form my opinions. And the reason I don't wanna talk about politics, if you haven't seen that video, small little recap, they are so divisive, they are so personal. I am in the process of trying to learn as much as possible and I would hate, hate to ever spread misinformation. And the thing that makes me so upset is like that second comment in there. That's where a lot of my sadness comes from is people's inability or unwillingness to respect other people with differing beliefs. Like I said, I just shared to you where I am in my journey of trying to categorize myself politically when I don't really feel like I do fall into a specific category. So you now know where I fall. But just that attitude makes me so sad. I would hate to be friends with only people that have the same opinions as me. Like how limiting would my worldview be if I didn't subject myself to different opinions? Like growing up, I'm about to go on another tangent here, I did live in what we called the Bernie bubble. I lived in Bernie, Texas, and it was very conservative, very white, very Christian. And so everybody basically believed the same thing. So when I was in high school, I didn't wanna be in that same Bernie bubble. I wanted to be around more diverse opinions and lifestyles and thoughts, which is why I drove an hour and a half each way to go into a much more diverse inner city school in the middle of San Antonio. And I'm so glad I did because I do see a lot of people that are very sheltered with one opinion around them. I don't think that that is healthy. I think it's really good to want to be around varying opinions so that you can have the full picture. And right now I am trying to, you know, get that picture analyzed. The best way I can put it, if you wanna see my much more in-depth response, I'll link that video down below. But um, I also know that it is very important for me to talk about my privilege and know that me saying, I'm not gonna talk about politics anymore on this channel is in a way privileged. But I want you to know that I'm doing it for reasons of me trying to figure out my beliefs, trying to educate myself, and I don't wanna spread misinformation. And I want this to be a safe space for everyone where varying opinions can come together and not feel alienated, which is why I'm choosing not to talk about politics on this channel. And I'm working on assessing my privilege and how that plays into politics and how I can use my privilege to better help people. I think it's so interesting that that is such a pressure where like people wouldn't expect their favorite cooking channel to talk about politics. People wouldn't expect their favorite makeup channel or interior design channel to do it. Like, I don't think every channel has to be political. I think that some channels can just be a safe space for people to get out of the political conversations and to come here and relax and have 10 minutes away from that. And I feel like that's okay. That's okay. I can still be working towards political things in my personal life without bringing it here onto this channel. So that's all that. You've seen a new side of me today. I think it's just me like hitting my max, tapping out a little bit being a little bit, um, I think it's really bad for me to be a people pleaser on this platform. And I know a lot of it comes with me being open and honest about a lot of different things. Um, and I do kind of think as my platform grows bigger, I am much more hesitant to be open and honest about things because as it grows bigger and as I am transparent about things, also more criticism comes along, which is why I understand why so many big YouTubers, you know, keep things very surface level. I hope to never be a very surface level channel, but I maybe for my own mental health might have to like take a step back from being super open and transparent about things all the time, um, only because it is overwhelming at times um, and it does open the door to a lot more criticisms. It's a very interesting thing. Wow, this video got so overly honest, but I do think it's important to, uh, you know, be open with you guys right now while I try to navigate all of this. And then if I ever feel the point where I am just like absolutely overwhelmed, then, you know, I'll go back to just, just thrifting videos and things like that. <laughs> but I love having a relationship with you and I feel like this is a friend group and like having conversations about more serious things is important within friend groups. So I'm pushing myself to continue to do this even if it makes me uncomfortable. And this was a lot of fun, um, was also hard. I am very glad that people were honest and I hope that my 
responses were also honest. I, I normally try to filter myself quite a bit whenever I do things on YouTube, and today I don't feel like I really filtered myself at all. So that's cool. Maybe that's a step towards growth. Who knows? <sighs> well, I love y'all with my absolute whole heart. I really do. I really, really, really do. Thank you for loving me and for hanging out with me, even if your opinions or beliefs are different from me. And I want you to know that even if we do have differing opinions or beliefs, I'm so glad that you're in my life. And I'm so glad that you're here because like I said, I, I think that that's important. I think it's always important to be learning and educating yourself from different opinions, different beliefs, different religions, different lifestyles, everything to try to be as mindful about our beliefs and our actions as possible. So thank you for being here. I love you. I hope you have the best rest of your day and I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye.